All right. The latest on Vince McMahon is that his legal team today, yesterday, filed a memorandum. So a couple of uh, weeks ago, April 23rd, Janelle Grant's team had filed a motion to strike comments included in their initial motion, which was when they were compelling arbitration. They uh, they wanted arbitration, but they also gave Vince's side of the story. She wanted that uh, stricken from the record. And they claim these were inflammatory lies. He had used lies. it as a platform to launch vicious falsehoods, attacking her moral character, attempt to harass and intimidate her into submission. So today, his team referred to the motion as, quote, the height of hypocrisy. They stated the plaintiff to strike was meritless, height of hypocrisy. They said having falsely accused McMahon in a public forum despite an obligation to arbitrate, in an inflammatory 67-page complaint that completely disregarded the mandate of the federal rules of civil procedure. They now uh, sought to strike the preliminary statement. And essentially, they said that, uh, you know, there was nothing in there that um, legally they weren't allowed to state. And, uh, And basically... Obviously, Vince's side of the story is that she was into all of this, and she instigated a lot of this, and it was a consensual relationship. Mm -hmm. That's that's his claim. Yes, uh, very much so. Yep. And so what came out today is that his side claims that he received a number of text messages from her. And there's a well. They 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 texted back and forth for years. Yes, but he's saying there were a bunch of them that uh, did not have not come out. Yes, uh, that she was in love with him. He he was the love of her life. He was her best friend. She wanted to have sex with him. Provided graphic detail. She fantasized about being held down. Enjoyed being in pain. Wanted rough sex. She wanted defendant to watch her have sex with other people and know about her sex with others. She wanted defendant to give her thousands of dollars for clothes, plastic surgery, and other gifts. She wanted to have a future with the defendant even after signing the agreement. And that she wanted the defendant to keep living in the same building so she could continue to see him even after signing the agreement. Now, Vince aside claims... Well, he deleted all of these messages after they uh, after their he has, relationship he, he ended. Has, he 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 wants to prove that. Um, but which so what's interesting is that he deleted all these messages, right? So when the feds, I don't know that this. Okay, when the feds got his phone, which which was to look at these messages among other things. They were evidently deleted, right? Because if they were not deleted... He, he is claiming that after they broke up, that he deleted he, the messages. He, he okay? deleted the messages, right. Okay, so, but so, he, they did say here... Um, let's see if I can find it here. Well, uh, she still has them. Well, that that's essentially what he said. Eventually, what it says here is uh, he deleted the messages... But, but she still has them. But the messages she sent to him would come out in discovery, is what he said. Which because means uh, they believe she still has all of the text messages. They believe that. Well, they believe she has the text messages because what she put in the lawsuit were the text messages. Yes, and he, he some has, of the text messages. Yes, yeah, some of them. Right. Yes. Which is just the most inflammatory. I mean, he has always said, essentially, or his side, I should say, has always maintained the idea that you know the the text messages that were shown which were not his or not hers but if you saw hers in relation to his it would explain his and that's the because and and you have to say that because the if you throw out everything in that lawsuit as if you just go in with the idea, and I've said this many times, if you go in with that lawsuit and you throw out everything she claimed and just say, hey, look, this is just her claims, let's take worst case scenario for her, best case scenario for Vince, and that is that everything she said isn't true, okay? But we know the texts are real. We know that. It is 100% those texts are real that were in the lawsuit. And if you look at those texts alone, you know, that's the thing where you go like, he can't come back. So the argument has to be that we're seeing, yes, those texts are what he said, but they are not in context because you are not seeing what she said to precipitate 
and lead to his responses in those texts. That said, there's still a question, and a big one, I think, that even if you take him at face value and that, that um, you know, she said all these things in these deleted messages that he cannot prove, but she could have, that she would have, and that they could prove if they could basically get discovery on her phone. I still don't know that even that that, that, that person should be a major executive with a pro wrestling company. Well, I mean, that's that's a different thing entirely here. I mean, yeah, uh, but that's and the by thing. the way, the exact the exact thing that was written here is indeed, while defendant is no longer in possession of the text messages between the parties as he deleted them when he broke off the relationship. The discovery in this case will show that plaintiff sent him sexually explicit images of herself and texted him to say, among other things, and they have the entire list right here. Yeah, the big list. But, yes. so, another, but, but another, so another thing that's that I would presume from what was said, because you remember one of the things when the feds raided him was they confiscated the phone. So would they be able to retrieve those messages? Because if if, if they could not reach, if they could retrieve them, then Vince, with all the money that he's got at his disposal, should be able to retrieve. Well, them. I I believe that uh, I don't know this for sure, but I think that the they can be accessed to a certain point, but this is years ago. I mean, this would have been... It's, it's two years ago. Right? No, I mean, he, he, these text messages were like before the entire thing went down. He he says he deleted them after they broke right. off the relationship. So, so, so that's, 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 that's 2020, 2022? It, it is, but I mean, you know, it depends on your phone as well, because yeah. there are settings on your phone where like, you know, delete text messages older than one year. I, I don't know what his phone was sent to or set to, so... My guess is he probably couldn't retrieve them. So, but, but the point is, is, is if he can't, can the feds? Well, they seem to... It, it, what it suggests here is they have her phone and they have them. Because it didn't say, uh, you know... It says flat out the discovery in this case will well, show. Okay, that's if So they, can, they must believe that they, they all believe, of these messages are, are uh, available. They believe, they believe from her phone. Yes. Okay. But okay. not from his phone. Okay, but so when they retrieved his phone to get those messages, those messages weren't there. Yes. In theory. Yes, that's what they're saying. Okay. That's because to me, that's when it comes to the investigation, that's a point no one's brought up. Because, like, one of the things they, they did was, you know, so, so like you go, like, um, if he's deleting a lot of the stuff, um, you know, I mean, I don't know. You know, I don't know. That's just, it's, that was just a new thing that kind of popped up there. But I mean, I would. I, I think that the the key among the many keys here is that um, you know, I mean, he has maintained from the start his side that it's a consensual relationship that she was into this stuff, and um, you know, it will all come out in discovery. They still brought up the idea that. Um, you know, in the in the thing, the same thing about um, she claimed in the lawsuit that, you know, she was the caretaker for the parents, for her parents, and, you know, was distraught about them passing away, and, and they just passed away, and, you know, we never did get, which is interesting, we never really did get, like, and I, I'm surprised about this, because, you know, he's got top-notch investigators and everything. We never did. They never did say like when the mother died. They did said the no. father had the father had died two years prior to to her meeting Vince with the idea that it's been two years, which is not to say that you're not going to be distraught two years later. You very well could be, but the idea that she had been a caregiver that had not been the case for two years. And also, the claim was that she was not a caregiver. She he was living at a rest home, and she was not living with the parents she was living with her fiance in the same place that vince met her in that uh you know multi-million you know those multi-million dollar places that it was that was a place that vince bought uh man like i i remember when vince bought the place because it was like you know hint hint vince is not living at at home in the stanford mansion anymore he's got a new place and um and that's, I mean, again, I, I don't remember the exact year, but 
it feels to me like that was like in the 20 year range ago if not longer I feel this was in the early 2000s but anyway Vince Vince has been living there when he bought the place when Vince bought his place Donald Trump was the owner of that place I mean I think that Trump ended up you know the, the big place I think Trump ended up um, um, selling but it was it had Trump's name on it at the time but it does not anymore but um, he was living there and the point was is that he's claiming that she was living there with her fiance which Ann Callis said was not her fiance they'd broken up but she was still living with him in that place and Vince's side is just like trying to go with the idea that uh, uh, she was living there for the whole two years that they were having their relationship so um, and with the idea that she was cheating on her fiance with him they're saying that she was already broken up um, the idea was that um, they were still living together the whole time and uh, you know I mean again that's that's their side and that's um it's already out um, that that's stuff that uh, Ann Callis was trying and and Janelle Grant's side was trying to uh, get stricken from the record which you know again the argument they're arguing he sh it should not be stricken from the record and they threw a lot of salvos out about what would be on the phone um, and uh, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's going to uh, continue. Um, you know, I will say one thing that I, I got out of this entire thing. You know, they uh, her claim is, you know, you you shouldn't have got all of this information out in the first filing. And, you know, their claim is, you know, there's nothing wrong with getting the information out. We didn't do anything wrong. And by the way, here's some more information. Yeah. And when they gave the second batch of information, and then when they just had the line about will come out in discovery, I mean, what I got out of this is they don't want to go to trial. They want arbitration. They want this yes. to be settled quietly. Right. They but don't he, want also, to... he also wants to make sure that I get my side of the story out and Without. then we go quiet about everything. He doesn't want to just have her side of the story out, and then right. they go to arbitration, and it all goes away. Like, you can tell from these last two filings, it's like they want to get as much of his side of the story out as humanly possible, and then quietly go to arbitration and just finish the whole thing off. Well, the whole thing is, you're, you're 100% right, by the way. 100% right on that. But the um, the thing is, is, is they need, as I told, said from the very beginning, they need to rehabilitate his image enough to where he can do business as a businessman because that's what he wants to do, whether it's wrestling, which apparently, from what I'm told, it's not wrestling, but he absolutely wants to do this. He wants to not have this name. He doesn't want to be Harvey Weinstein, you know, Weinstein. And and it's like, uh, so, so the goal is to do that. The only way he can do that is to uh, basically make it look like, you know, and, and portray it as this is a crazy lying woman. And I absolutely had an affair with her. And, but it's like all that stuff that she said, every single bit of it in, is not true, except for the text messages. And the reason you say that is because you can't argue the text messages. So for the text messages, you have to say, well, there's a reason for the text messages. And but everything else is is not true other than perhaps some of the dates and things and things happened and the job, you know, the job scenarios were, were no doubt accurate. But, um, you know, so he he, ha you know, no matter what happens, he wants the thing to go away. He wants it to go to arbitration, but yet he needs enough stuff out there to where he can go in there and go just some crazy woman who's, uh, you know, had an affair with and, you know, whatever had a bad um you know bad judgment which is you know bad judgment bad relationship everyone's had those maybe not everyone but in his world probably you know the rich the world of rich and famous probably many many people have had it and the people he would do business with either had probably had it or would be sympathetic knowing people who had and that's the portrayal that he wants out there and it's very important because without it he can't you can't do business with a guy with that lawsuit thing there. And that's why the lawsuit has to go away for him to do this. Now, the thing is, you know, in the big picture, you know, Ann Callis is a very, very good lawyer. By the way, she did not, you know, like usually when they do the filing, she or or um, 
grants people will comment very quickly um, in almost every case very quickly they did not on this one for whatever reason they declined comment um, and but the so the whole the whole situation right now that we're at is that she's a good lawyer but Vince has you know Vince is hiring the best lawyers money can buy in New York so it's um, you know again not saying who's gonna what what the outcome is going to be, just that um, he's he's got really good lawyers here, which you know when you're in a situation like this, you need really good lawyers. How this is all going to turn out, you know, we'll see. But uh, yeah, that you you hit it right on the head though when it comes to that. You know, it's that it, you know that he he need he needed this out. The reason this filing came out the way it did was we didn't. We didn't have enough in the last one. People are still weren't moved enough. I, I know that that they expected that last filing for people to go. Okay, we've discredited her by the the story about her parents having died two years earlier, or and the mother even more than that, and that she was, you know, living in this multi million dollar place. You know, it wasn't like she was this destitute woman who had no place to live and blah, blah, blah. She's living, you know, with a major executive who's her fiance while cheating on him with Vince the whole time. So that's the story that they wanted out to discredit her. And then Ann Callis came back and basically, I don't want to say she ruined the story, but she had to come back right away. So now you've got more. They had to they, they knew they had to get more out there before getting this thing to arbitration and having it go away and you know it's how the judge will rule you know the, the key thing right now is how the judge is going to rule on the arbitration yes and 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 i don't know what he would do i mean based on the letters of the nda he, he would be compelled to rule in favor of vince but vince did not live up to the terms of the nda his claim is because she didn't she didn't first but if she didn't and he didn't both let's just say as a worst case let's say they both didn't at that point wouldn't i, I would think from both sides the nda the nda could very well be argued null and void i'm not a lawyer that's just my thought as being a normal person that if both sides have not lived up to it how do you enforce it so anyway that's that's basically where it stands Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.